Okay, so thank you very much for joining this um, workshop. Um, so for those of you who have joined this morning's workshop, um, I hope that um, you are joining the workshop as an advanced user or at least an intermediate user. If you are a beginner for uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, that is okay as well, uh, but there are a lot of advanced feature here. Um, I'm not going to cover the basic because uh, this is for the advanced users. Huh? Um, so uh, if you are a beginner uh, using Microsoft Teams, that is okay. You can uh, learn something as well this morning. So for this morning, uh, these are the topics that we will be covering. Uh, so you can see that um, this was the message that was indicated by ADEC as part of this workshop. Um, so this workshop is open to all academic staff uh, who have attended any Microsoft Teams session organized by ADEC. Um, so there are a few workshops, uh, uh, not few, there are many workshops organized uh, by ADEC under Microsoft Teams. Um, me uh, being primarily the trainer and also Dr. Zahi has done few for staff as well. Um, so any Teams workshop organized by edX, and if you have been actively using Teams for teaching and learning, then you are most encouraged to join this workshop, right? So this is what we are going to learn um, and talk about this whole morning. Uh, we're going to see uh, how to join a meeting with an ID and passcode and you know how to customize virtual background presentation mode. Uh, uh, we're going to look at together mode, all together feature, uh, conduct polls and insights, uh, pin a message, reply, and then uh, use annotation together, um, how to initiate recording and live transcription features. And then finally, we have the um, any settings and troubleshooting that is needed for all of you this morning, right? So um, I hope that you all are excited because uh, I personally am excited because <laughs> there, there are many no, uh, new features for this uh, Microsoft Teams. And I think that uh, if you really uh, master all this and uh, you know how to use it, you will make your classroom really, really interesting and make your life really, really much easier. OK, um, so let me start by um, uh, sharing the screen. OK, I am going to. Yeah, let me just activate this. OK, so the first thing is um, you need to have your Teams app launch, uh, which I believe that many of you already have done that uh, because you have joined this meeting using that. OK, so this is example of um, the Teams interface. Yeah, um, so you'll be able to see how the Teams interface uh, looks like now. All right. Uh, if you use Teams uh, quite often, you will have many of these groups uh, here stated here. Uh, but if you don't uh, use Teams many often, uh, then perhaps this will be a little bit empty. And those of you who are beginners in Microsoft Teams, uh, this will perhaps be none at all. Right. Um, so if you use Teams, you will definitely have a lot of uh, groups here. OK, so I'm going to go to the first uh, point. Um, so do, do stop me if you have any questions or uh, you can put in the chat or you can uh, put the reaction raising icon or you can simply just unmute your microphone and ask any questions you want. Because uh, when when I do training for teams, I, I kind of get very excited. So <laughs> and when I get excited, I, I kind of go fast. So all right. So uh, if you need me to repeat, please feel free to do so. Yeah. OK. Uh, we are going to start with the first one, which is um, uh, the meet now function, the meet now function in Microsoft Teams. So meet now is a function for us to start meetings in uh, Microsoft Teams. So if you see that, um, for example, this on my left, you have many tabs here. You have the activity, you have the chat, you have the teams, you have assignment, calendar. So these are some of the tools that are available in the Teams dashboard. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to click the calendar um, uh, dashboard here, the calendar icon, right? And now you could see that 
that's an event that is going on. Uh, so this is our workshop this morning at 9 to 11. OK, uh, one of the most difficult or one of the most painful tasks using Microsoft Teams last time was to start a meeting using Teams, right? So there are only two ways that you can start a meeting using Teams. Uh, one way is through creating a Teams. So you need to go and create a team first. That means create a, a group, something like a WhatsApp group. You have to create your WhatsApp group, add your members inside, and then you are able to initiate meeting. And that meeting can only be among members in that group. So if people from outside of the group wants to join, uh, they're not able because they're not members in that group. So that was one of the most difficult and challenging part last time. But that is still the case now. So if you create a group, and you want to share that link to people outside of the group who are not members of the group yet, they are still not able to join the meeting because that group uh, meeting is exclusively for members in that group. So there is one way to start a meeting, create a group, and then start a meeting within members of that group. OK, so I think you all should be familiar because this is the, the beginner's part. Now, the another way to create a meeting is to go to Blender. Right, and then you click this new meeting function, and then you put in all the necessary details and all this, and then you put your emails here, and then you are able to send the meeting invite to your uh, meeting participants. So that was another way. But now uh, you have a third way, which Microsoft Teams has make it much, much more easier for us. Now it's just a simple button called Meet Now. So earlier, we did not have this, this button meet now here just be in between uh, in the center in between uh, join with an ID and new meeting so you have uh, meet now so what is so unique about this is when you just click this uh, you can straight away um, set your meeting title so maybe I'm going to put a uh, meeting or maybe no 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 meeting maybe workshop to learn uh, on teams okay so, for example, this is your meeting title, uh, right? So, like how we, we you send a meeting invite. Okay, what is your meeting title? Now, when you do this workshop to learn on Teams, you can straight away get a link to share. So, you see in the first one, get a link to share. Now, when you click this, get a link to share, you immediately have the link here. See, the link is already provided. So, you just have to copy this. You paste it into your email or just copy that that link and paste it into your WhatsApp, then you are good to go. Anyone who clicks that link, uh, they are able to join you in this meeting. So it's very fast to start a meeting as compared to previously where you have to add, uh, create a group, add members in the group, or you have to create a calendar, uh, you know, uh, 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 put all the title, all the details, the email and all this, then only you are able to uh, create a meeting. So now it's a shortcut. Uh, so this is a very, very big improvement from Teams. Um, so you just copy this link and then paste it into email, paste it in your WhatsApp and anyone uh, who has the link, they are able to click it and they're able to join your uh, Teams meeting. So you don't have to schedule a calendar and what so not. Right. So this is for uh, those who want to have an immediate meeting. OK, for example, um, um, uh, I happen to have a, me a meeting like now talk new features and then probably uh, Dr. Sheena has some question for me after this. So I want to have a personal uh, meeting with Dr. Sheena maybe for 15 minutes after the session. Uh, so I want to quickly start a meeting after the workshop. Then this is the way. OK, this is a very impromptu and very informal way. Uh, of course, if you want an official uh, invite and all this, you go to the normal way of starting a new meeting. OK, can you all follow me? Are you all OK with this? So this is the uh, meet now function. Uh, sorry, can I ask something? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, if this one is not under channel, is it? It's not under channel. You cannot do it under channel, is it? Uh, so it's under can. the teams. Yes, this is under the calendar. I mean, okay. the channel is under teams um, and this is also under teams, but the channel, you have to create a group. You have to add members yeah. within the group. OK, that mm -hmm. was the one. This is this, that was that is one of the ways. Oh, uh, this one is different way. So if you uh, right. add the meet now over here for the calendar, it won't be included into our. For example, like one team have many yes. channels, so it won't be included into the channel. Okay. Exactly. 
Exactly. Okay, so if you want something on a long term and mm -hmm. you want to store your files, you want to store documents, you want to see mm -hmm. past checks and all this, then I will recommend creating a Teams, okay, uh, creating a group. Uh, but if you just want an impromptu one-off meeting, uh, then this will be an option. Okay, so it won't be in any Teams. So it will be no. un under calendar. Correct, correct. Okay. That means there's no group formed. It's just okay. uh, for the purpose of that meeting. But okay. you can still reuse that link. Uh. I think one of the things that I discovered, our lecturers, they weren't aware that uh, they keep on creating new links uh, but for the same function. For example, a meeting with a, a student, for example. Okay, uh, for example, I'm meeting uh, Alia uh, for supervision this week. So I create a link and, and share. Okay, come and meet me online with my student. Then next week, I go and create another link, you know. Uh, so I noticed that many of the lecturers are creating new links. Actually, you don't need to. You can just recycle the same link. Um, so you, you created a link once and you can use it forever. So you, you just tell the student, okay, next week, Click the same link and and come online. So same thing as the teams. Um, uh, but the difference in teams when you create the group, for example, you go to teams here, and then you create a group. You you don't have to uh, create a link because you have the meet now function in there. Okay, example. Uh, okay, for this top top new features. Okay, then you have general right. You have the meet now function here. So you already created the teams. You already added the members inside. So you don't have to provide a separate link. Any members in this group, they will see a notification like this, the big blue bar like this. A meeting is ongoing with how many people inside. They just click the join button and they are able to join the meeting. So that will be the difference. Um, it depends on how you want to use Teams. If you want to use it on a long term, one of the advantage of creating a Teams is you are able to store files. So, for example, all the PDF files, slides, or documents, and all this, you are able to store it here. And that will be one of the advantages. Lah. Uh, but if you say you just want a one-off meeting, you don't need to store any files and all this, then go to the calendar. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Any other questions on this, on the on the meet now function? So that... Uh, yeah. Dr. Doni, hello. This is Salifa. Yeah, uh, yeah, Salifa. I have a question. Not yeah. on the new, not on the meet now, but on the second uh, way of creating uh, meetings, which is mm. through the calendar. Okay. Uh, may I know once we set a calendar, once we set out invitation, will the in, will the notification goes to our Google Calendar or where will the notification goes? Yeah. The notification goes to the email that you created. Okay. For example, new meeting, right here. Um, for example, I put uh, maybe okay, Dr. Salifa. So, Salifa, at, so this one you have to give their email address. You can put um, my. Hey, sorry, <laughs> this one, this one here. Uh, this is the uh, meeting title. Okay, meeting. Okay, so there you go. So, you put your email address, but if you want the link to yourself, you see, one of the the difficult part uh, in Teams is uh, when you create this this link, okay, and you yourself want to join the meeting, um, one of the approaches is for you to on the Teams and go back to the calendar icon. So in your Teams, you have the calendar icon, click the calendar icon, and then you you navigate, and then you navigate to your calendar. Okay, maybe my, my meeting is uh, today, so I have to navigate, okay, 9 o'clock, so because sometimes it's like this, so you have to navigate 9 o'clock, and then you click join. So this, if you created the meeting or somebody has created the meeting and invited you. But uh, if you would like that link in your email, then I suggest that uh, you put that e uh, email inside. So for example, you have Salifa. So I, I want uh, um, the meeting to come to my email, the meeting link to come to my email. So I'm going to put my UM email as well. So whoever is inside here, okay, um, goes the link receives to your inbox. Otherwise, if you don't put this, uh, you have to open it through Calendar or the meeting goes to your Microsoft 365, uh, your Outlook email, okay, which is another email uh, different from our UM mail, right? So the easiest is to actually CC you inside. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, by the way, will, will the same notification uh, captured by our Google Calendar? I uh, know. No, no, it won't. Oh, yeah, okay. it won't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any, any, uh, no, Dr. Salifa, when you say Google Calendar as in 
you are able to view the, the meeting in the Google Calendar. And also, if it, the Google Calendar is linked to your mobile, you're able to view that, that meeting schedule. Is that what you mean? Uh, well, well uh, as you know, our 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 UM mail is apa? menggunakan Google, Google kan? So, yep. our main reference now is Google Calendar. So, yep. every email invitation, notification, yep. we, ha we heavily rely on Google Calendar. So, I wonder whether this team invitation also yes. goes to that calendar or yes, should yes. we open to? Yeah, yeah, it will be so, in yeah. Google Calendar. Ah, yeah. yeah, it will be in Google right. Calendar. And if Google Calendar is linked to your mobile, you will also be able to see the meeting schedule in your mobile as well. Okay, great. Okay, thank okay. you, Doctor. Okay. Um, any other questions on this? Okay, Noah. All right. Um, that that will be the meet now function. Um, now you also have another function called uh, joining a meeting with an ID. Ah, uh, so you see this one. This is something like Zoom lah, where you have a you have an ID and a password. So join with an ID. So if you click this one, join with an ID. Okay, now you have to put the meeting ID and the password. So I'm going to share you, for example, uh, I, where my file when I really went missing. Hmm. Okay, this is an example of a uh, typical uh, Teams meeting that you have scheduled. Okay, so you you if you have added your uh this is through the calendar huh? if you schedule a meeting through the calendar you put the meeting title you put the email you put a time and all this uh, this is a typical email uh uh to all the uh, recipients of the uh, meeting which they will get an email like this saying that uh, a meeting has been scheduled for them right so you have the title here and then you have the the date the time and all this and then what we usually see is this one um okay what we usually see is check on to this annotation tool okay never mind what we usually see here is the uh click here to join the meeting so you you will see that when you click that you are able to join the meeting this is in your email invitation but another thing now you can notice that you have the meeting id and you have the password right so those advanced users in teams if you are familiar with teams you just give them the meeting id and the password so this is where they enter in the meeting id they enter in the password so the meeting id is this and then the password is this for example so if you go here you just enter in the meeting id and you just enter in the meeting password and then you click join meeting and then they are able to uh, 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 join the meeting, for example. Right. So this is how like example, uh, typical meeting ID. If you put the meeting ID here and then you put a password and then you click the join the meeting, it will be activated. But you have to put the right one uh, because the system is quite intelligent. If you just simply put like this, it, it will not activate. Um, you have to put more or less the accurate meeting ID and the password and then it will activate join meeting. So you are able to also join meeting using uh, a meeting ID and the password, right? Also, oh, there are two ways now. You can just join a meeting with a link or you can join a meeting with a uh, meeting ID and a password. So this is another new feature for uh, Microsoft Teams, right? Uh, do you all have any questions on this, the second new feature? Noah. Okay, excellent. Okay, I think one of the biggest breakthrough for uh, Microsoft Teams is now you have a double window. So you will see now that yeah, this is one window where you have the meeting screen here where you see all our pictures here. Okay, now you also have another window here. So this is another window. So one of the 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 biggest uh, update for Microsoft Teams is you have a double window. That means the meeting window is now separate from the Teams uh, dashboard. Last time, when you want to launch a meeting, uh, the meeting is within the dashboard. So you are not able to navigate unless you go right to the bottom uh, here where you see the Teams cursor and then 
you switch. So this one is usually very technical for those who are not very IT savvy. They might struggle and say, how do I go back to my team's dashboard? How? So we have to tell them, uh, you have to go at the bottom. You have to go at the bottom and 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 click the team's icon. And then uh, when you click the team's icon, you see the two windows and then you navigate. Uh, so this has been a very great struggle for those who are not IT savvy. But now you have two windows so you can easily navigate. So while the meeting is going on, you can also do other tasks. Okay, I can chat, for example. Um, I can also go and create a new Teams, for example. I can look at my calendar and start scheduling other things, for example, or I can even look at my activities. So this is another advantage, another new feature where the, the window for the meeting is separate. So while you are doing the meeting, you can also start doing other tasks as well, right? So that will be, um, another advantage another new feature for uh, microsoft teams okay so are you all uh, any questions on the uh, multiple windows part for microsoft teams um hi donny uh yes yes jasmine is it yes hi this is yeah, jasmine yeah, um, just would like to ask you a question about the meet now or the meeting creating mm. a new meeting i was mm. wondering um how do you create a meeting with an ID? Or is it every time we create a meeting, they will come up with the ID and a passcode? Yes, you create a meeting, it will come up with an ID and password. So it, to create a normal meeting, you just go to calendar. Okay, uh, this depends. Like you want a formal invitation with all the necessary details and all this, you can go to new meeting. But if you just want a very impromptu, a very quick meeting, then meet now will just uh, be there. Or you can even customize, like you just need a link there. You can click meet now and put a title and all this and get a link to share. Then you can put the link in your email or WhatsApp and then you can put title, date and all. It, it, it's up to you or you want teams to do the work for you, can. So go to new meeting. Okay, you just add the title, you uh, you add the email address of those who are involved in the meeting, you put the date, the time and all this, and then you click save. So once you click save, you are going to get something that looks like this, the email will look like this. So you are going to get an email with a title, uh, the date, the time and all this, and then your participants, your meeting participants are able to join the meeting by clicking this, click here to join the meeting. So they will receive this in your inbox. Uh, together with the meeting ID and also the passcode, right? Yeah. So we don't correct. have to set the passcode. So we can't set the specific ah, no. passcode. No, 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 no. Uh, you can't. Okay. So you can't set. I, uh, <laughs> I know Zoom, Zoom can set that, but uh, yeah. but <laughs> but we we can't. Uh, Teams, Teams is trying to play a catch up. Uh, actually, they didn't want this feature, but because many people are comparing, so they they just introduced this just for the sake of saying that we also have it. Uh, but uh, not necessarily you are able to customize the password. Um, I uh, don't think they will be able to do that. They want to do that anytime soon or soon. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Donny. All right. Yeah, because I think one of the, the difference between Teams and Zoom is that uh, Zoom is an application where you need to launch it um, in your um, uh, desktop or in your mobile. Whereas Teams is already a background in uh, application where you don't need to launch it. You don't have to sign in and all this. So that is the difference. Uh, it's exactly like our WhatsApp. Yeah, so you can use it perfectly like our WhatsApp where it's constantly running in the background. So that is the difference. So uh, they, they don't really want to follow exactly what Zoom is doing where you can customize the password because it's it's not meant to be that because it's meant to be very easy and user friendly uh, where you can launch it immediately. So they, they have it as a mobile app as well where there is no signing in required. So that will be one of the main purpose of that. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, okay. Now I'm going to go back here. All right. So this is on the uh, multiple windows and uh, that is another new feature now another new feature that um um is is, is already there but uh, not many people uh, are perhaps aware about is the um okay now let me let me start uh, a meeting here let me, it's not going to start the meeting it's just going to have this launching window okay so for example this this you see how how quickly and how fast you can start a meeting now huh? you just press the meet now button and you can already start a meeting okay so many are, are not aware about this uh background filters right so uh if you turn okay let, uh, let me just turn off the camera here 
Okay, so now if you if you turn on the camera here, okay, uh, this this will be another of my screen. So when you turn on the camera, uh, you are able to customize your background. So if you click this, for example, background filters, right? Uh, here you already have some uh, background pictures is already available for you here, right? But uh, one of the things that you can do is you can also add your own background picture. Uh, your own virtual background. So, for example, you have, if you don't want to add any pictures, that's fine. You just want to blur uh, whatever that is in your background, that's fine. You can click the blur or you can select. Uh, there are multiple virtual backgrounds here, uh, which you can select. And one of the things is you can do, you can also upload your own uh, virtual background. So, it's more or less like customizing. Like customizing. So, if you add new here, Okay, add new, and then you have to go to your, uh, go to the virtual background that you have it. So, for example, you, you, you need to know where you place the virtual background in your computer. Uh, most of the time, I place my stuff in the desktop, so it's easy to locate. Or you want to place it in other folders, as long as you are aware where you keep that, that virtual background the files. So, for example, this is the virtual background that I have and I would like to upload it before the meeting. Uh, so you can even click this and then you will see that uh, you have a nice uh, UM uh, virtual background here. So this is another way on how to um, customize your virtual background. Uh, so you can do it before the meeting or you can also do it uh, in the meeting before you, you turn on the um, camera, right? So this will be another new future. Uh, before you join the meeting. So this this feature was actually there for uh, quite some time also as well. It's, it's not really that new, uh, but many people were not aware. And sometimes uh, the option to turn on the background filter before the meeting was not available. Uh, but now it, it has been made a permanent uh, feature in, in any Teams meeting, right? So this is a way in which you can utilize your own and customize your own uh, virtual background as well. OK, so any questions on the virtual background you all have? None. Nah? OK, none. All right. Now, another new feature for uh, Microsoft Teams is uh, we have different presentation mode enhancement. So uh, I call it presentation mode enhancement. Uh, so what is presentation mode enhancement is that uh, you have new ways of sharing your slides and presenting, and you have various options to do that. Okay, so let me just launch a slide here now. Uh, and then I'm going to screen share. Okay, so I'm going to screen share the slide now. Okay, now, uh, when you share a screen um, in Microsoft Teams, um, one of the things that we need to take note of that the function to turn on the computer sound, the function to stop presenting, the function uh, to change any of the presentation mode is now available at the top of your screen. So when you share your PowerPoint, uh, you don't have to go back to the meeting window and and you know now you have two windows so now you have the dashboard and then you have the windows at the meeting windows you have two screen now so the meeting windows is where you see all our pictures and all the participants so usually what uh, 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 users will do is they will go back to the meeting window and stop sharing and or if they have forgotten to include sound so they share again and turn on the button to include sound. So that was the old way of doing things. So now uh, Microsoft Teams have updated um, their functionality in, 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 in a way that you can already do this when you are already sharing screen. So for example, okay, this is a presentation that I want to do, give to my audience, but let's say that I forgot to turn on the uh, computer sound. So you can just navigate on top so is you you just move your cursor to the, you move your mouse and bring it to the top you are able to see the uh, presentation mode here are you all um, are you all family with this anyone not sure what i'm talking about here can you let me know so you go to your powerpoint uh, where you're sharing the screen and just move your cursor to the top of the screen 
you will see something like a dashboard. Uh, so that is where you are able to now. Uh, uh, okay, let let me just okay, just a moment. Yeah, let me let me just show this. So this is how it looks like. Uh, Dr. Donny. Yeah, yeah. You are still seeing the um, slide. Yeah, yeah. Just a moment. Ah, uh. oh, yeah. That's correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. I'm still sharing that part. Okay, now this part. Okay, are you able to see my PowerPoint now? Uh, yes. Okay, so this is the part where um, I was talking about. Uh, you see your, your dashboard on the top. So when you share a screen, uh, you don't have to go back to the, the meeting. Uh, you are able to see this tool now at the top. So in your presentation slide, you're already sharing the screen. Uh, you don't have to go back to the meeting screen where all your participants in and stop sharing and say, oh yeah, I forgot to turn on. So I go back and stop sharing again. And then I click the button, include sound, and then I share again, you know, because you have that echo in the meeting, right, to share. So you don't have to do that. Now, uh, what they have done is they have uh, included this very cool uh, uh, dashboard so you see at the top so when in your presentation you're already sharing the screen you just move your cursor your mouse right to the top and you will see that this toolbar appears this bar appears and you got many options here you have different different options so now you can easily uh, even include the computer sound so you may, might be wondering what is this uh? what is this uh, like screen and all this uh, like a like a computer screen this is what you call the include the computer sound uh, so let's say you've got a video, you want to play the video as part of your slide, uh, there has a sound, the video has a sound, so you have to turn on this so that your audience are able to hear the sound. Uh, so this will be the function and then you have the an annotation. So later we will be talking about annotation. Yeah. Uh, so just bear in mind that the annotation um, is here. Okay, the annotation tool is here. Later I will talk about it. So uh, you just, uh, just remember the annotation. Uh -huh. So annotation is here. And then here, you also have different presentation mode. So now you got four presentation mode, you know, very, very nice. So you got this presentation mode, uh, first one, which I'm already sharing. And then you have second presentation, third presentation and fourth presentation mode. So you got four different presentation mode and I will show you um, how does it work uh, now. Okay, just let me navigate back to my slide. Okay, so now, for example, this is the original slide without the, without the bar, without the bar. So you will notice that now, uh, while I'm presenting, oh, 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 sorry, camera is off. <laughs> okay, now camera is on. Okay, so now, uh, while I'm presenting, you are able to see me. Okay, now I can even turn on different features. So remember the bar earlier got four different features. Okay, so the, this is the first the first feature, uh, the boring one. So you can even turn on the second one. The second one looks something like this. Ah, uh, so now you see me in the slide itself. Do you all see me in the slide itself? Can you all see me in the slide? Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, so now I uh, now got two of my picture, uh, One is on the left. One more is on the right. Okay. So you you are able to see me in that in that slide. So you see me appearing in that slide. So if I go on to the next slide. Ah, uh, then you see me here also again. So maybe you want to design lah. You want to design your slide where you have a space for you to appear there lah. Otherwise, then you got words or got pictures overriding you. Then you say, oh, you sorry, sorry, yeah, you cannot see yeah. So your audience will say, what? Ah, uh, you are covering the picture. We cannot see ah. Uh, for example, like this lah. Now I'm covering my picture because you never design your slide. Ah, uh, so you you need to design your slide in such a way there is some space for you to appear there. Ah, uh, so that. Um, others could see you uh, in that slide and also see you uh, what you are presenting as well. Uh, so this is another uh, very nice cool feature. Now you also have the third presentation mode. Okay, this is the second. Uh, the first one is the normal, the normal boring one. Uh, this is the second one which I showed you, which I will appear uh, in the slide. Okay, now uh, this is the third one. Okay, this is the third one. Uh, where you see me side by side with my presentation. So this one is very, very professional looking. Lah. This one, like when you want to go for conference ah, and then you present like this, who uh, people all see you also, they'll be very, well, this one very chungy user. Lah. Now they see how they put side by side the slide and the 
and the video. But actually, it's very simple. Uh, teams is the one who do it. Uh, no need any very technical knowledge about this. So are you able to see that you have my slide and you have me beside? Are you all able to see that? Yes. Uh, uh, so Sorry, I got a question about uh, the features also, but about the sound. Sometimes when I uh, share my sound uh, using the features you showed just, just now, sometimes uh, the student cannot hear my computer sound, but uh, they can hear my voice. So even though I reshare my, my slide, they can't sometimes. I, I'm not sure whether what's the problem of it. Okay. Have you, uh, uh, yeah, you have to turn on when you share a sound. Uh, you have to turn on. Uh, yeah. If if you see this part, are you able to see this this slide now? Ah uh, yes, I, I did. You I did turn on the 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 sound there, so there's no slash there. But still, they cannot okay. hear the sound. Is it a a technical problem there? Is it one student or all the students? Oh, can no, hear? no, all the students. All so the I mean, yeah, something sometimes. is wrong with your mm. video. I think maybe oh. your video has no audio. Did you try to play the video and see uh, whether it when has I sound? Yeah, when I try, uh, sorry to say, when I try with the, the uh, Zoom, it they can hear. It's the same slide, but they can hear. But in Zoom, I'm not sure why sometimes they cannot hear. Okay. Is um, it a technical problem, that one? What I would suggest that uh, you stop sharing and try again. If that is the case, you stop sharing and try again. But where do you place the video? Do you place it in your slide or do you... Uh, have the video externally. Uh, in the slide. In the slide, eh, it should be okay. Yeah, yeah so I, I can yeah. hear my slide uh, sound, but my student, when I share, they cannot hear the sound sometimes. Okay, okay, sometimes. Lah. Um, so what I would suggest is you stop sharing and um, uh, reshare again. And also you have a backup of that video outside of your slide. Uh, mm -hmm. So okay. in case that happens again, you play the video separately outside of the I slide. See. Uh, then you try to turn on the sound again, then it should be well. But usually it doesn't really happen very often. I, I've not really encountered that problem actually. Uh, but as a backup, uh, you can have an external uh, video outside of your slide as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I saw a, a few hands were raised just now earlier. Sorry. Any any questions you all have? Huh? I think I saw a few hands were raised. Uh, great, something new for me. Sorry, Dr. Donny. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Amirai, go ahead. Yeah, okay, sorry. No, actually, I had my hand raised just now, but then I put it down. Um, I yeah, was yeah. wondering if you could show again how to get that bar. I, I, oh, okay. I didn't really catch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you see the, the PowerPoint that I'm sharing now, uh, you just have to navigate your cursor, your mouse, to the top of your screen, and this bar will appear. So this is the bar that will appear uh, whenever that you are presenting. So you don't have to go back to your meeting and, and, and stop sharing and share again. And, and, and So it be clunk about. Uh, what you can do is you can share it here. When you are presenting the slide, just go and uh, navigate to the top. Just put your mouse and cursor. This bar will appear. Uh, and then you can, uh, uh, for example, press this button to turn on the sound, or you can press this button to annotate the screen, or you can change between the presentation mode here. So it's like a pop-up bar that will appear. Is oh, sorry, okay? is this only for PowerPoint, or does it work with other kinds of presentations as well? Like if I'm presenting a PDF, or I'm presenting a web page? Other kinds, other kinds of presentation also. Any form of presentation has this toolbar. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, all right. So, um, okay, I, I'm just going to go back to that. Uh, where where uh, was I? Yeah, sorry. I think there's another question. Is it? Sorry. Is there any an another question? No. Huh? Okay. Now, in in this presentation mode. Uh, you can also switch. Uh, ah, so you see, I, you can switch from left to right. So if you're on the person who like on the right, then it's on the right. Lah. If you like to be on the left, then it's on the left. So you can even navigate. So when you share your screen uh, and you turn on the different presentation mode, you will actually have a separate uh, 
pop-up window. So now you actually have three screens. You have one, the meeting screen in which you see all your uh, participants. Then you have the presentation screen in which you're sharing your slide. And then the third one, you have a small pop-up window in which you can actually um, navigate. So you can put left or you can even put right, something like this. Okay, so this will be the, and you can even adjust the size. Huh? All is within the same window. It's not very technical. Um, let me let me show you how it looks like um, here. Mm, okay, just a moment. Okay, just a moment. Huh? Let me show you how it how it looks like in in a PowerPoint slide. Okay, this is how. Hey, how come you did? Oh yeah, now it appears. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Um, uh, when when you when you uh try to play around with the presentation mode, so you see that this is my meeting 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 uh uh meeting window, right? Uh, and then what you have is something that that looks something like this. So you see that uh, this is the, the pop up window that I was talking about. So you see, for example, this one, uh, this is the pop up window. So here, when you do the pop. Uh, okay, here, for example, you do the pop up window. So you will see that this is something if you don't like this, you find it irritating, you can even minimize that. Huh? You have this small tab here, you click this, and this whole window will minimize, it will drop down. But this uh, third window gives you an option to navigate left and right. Uh, so once you share your screen, you can navigate. You want left or you want right, and you can even increase and decrease the size. Uh, increase and decrease your size, lah, not the presentation. Lah. Some people they say, can I can I decrease my presentation slide? I, I want my, my video to be larger. It cannot be like that. Lah. Because the emphasis is on the presentation. Uh, the video is the only one that make it big or small. They, it doesn't affect your presentation. So you can even decrease and increase your video size. But if you don't like this, you can just minimize. So this is where the third window comes in and you can uh, more or less uh, play around uh, with that setting. Okay. And then in the same uh, presentation mode, uh, you also have uh, uh, the other features, the third, uh, the fourth feature. The fourth feature in here is you have this one. Ah, so now you have this feature. So you can put left or you can put right. Uh, so this is another of the fourth feature where you will see that your PowerPoint and then you have a background. This is a little bit different than the second feature earlier. So this is a second feature. Second feature is I am in my PowerPoint itself. Uh, so you see me that I'm inside my PowerPoint. Now, for example, like this, uh, you see that I am inside my PowerPoint. But the fourth feature, uh, your PowerPoint decreases a little bit in size. OK, but you are beside your PowerPoint and then you have a background uh, at the back that looks something like this. So here you can even uh, increase. Ah, so those of you who, who like to increase yourself and decrease the presentation, ah, this is the mode. Uh, so you can increase and then you can decrease. This mode uh, increases yourself and then uh, this mode uh, decreases yourself and increases your PowerPoint. So it, it depends on your technique of presentation. Lah. So sometimes let's say uh, you finish presenting something and you want to elaborate on something and then you can uh, increase. Ah, then you can talk. Okay, what I mean actually is this, 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 this. Okay, now uh, you want to go back to presentation. Okay, you you increase the presentation back again. Okay? okay, so let's talk about the next point. Okay, the first point is this. Second point is this. Okay, now you want to talk about it. Uh, now you can uh, decrease the size of PowerPoint and then you increase yourself. Okay, then you talk. See, really, really cool, right? It, it makes you really, very professional. You know, it, it makes you like some 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 form of a uh, IT geek, uh, but actually. Uh, is all part of the setting. So you can play around uh, with this. Lah. This is what we call uh, presentation mode enhancement. Okay. Uh, you all have any questions on this? On the presentation mode enhancement? Nala. Okay, that is good. All right. Uh, now the next one. 
we are going to go into uh, the together mode now. OK, so to activate together mode, uh, first you have to activate the together mode now eh? uh, uh, feature. So in your dashboard, uh, where you see your, your Microsoft Teams windows now, you have people, you've got chat, you've got reaction, and then you have the applications, uh, the applications where you have more action. So you, you you know it's like a three dots dot 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 dot. And then you got more. So you click more, and then you have a a drop down of uh, options for you. Okay, let me just put it in a PowerPoint for those who might be struggling. Okay, so it looks something like this. Let me just share the screen. OK, let me just share the screen. OK, so now you have your uh, PowerPoint that looks something like this. OK, so. OK, so this is where you have the more. So this is your meeting. You have the more. So you click the more uh, applications here and then you go to uh, this one. Uh, together mode together mode so you click this together mode so uh when you click this together mode it switches your your um meeting mode into something uh, that looks like an auditorium or you have different different settings so you can even try it now uh so you click the together mode and you will see that it it brings you into a different dimension of a meeting uh, where you can meet together in a classroom and all this okay so now when you click that uh, together mode now. One of the cool things about this together mode now is that um, it changes. It changes. Uh, so you as a presenter, uh, when you click together mode, you are able to bring all your participants um, into this together mode now as well. Uh, last time it was separate. Last time when you activate together mode, uh, only you are able to see that together mode. Uh, your participants are not able to see unless they have changed it themselves. Uh, but now uh, they you are able to bring everyone into the together mode. Uh, so this is another new feature for uh, Microsoft Teams, right? So maybe we want to play with this now. I want to play with this, this together mode now. Uh, maybe you want to take a photo as well as uh, to document it under edX that we conducted this workshop. Uh, maybe you uh, at this point you can turn on your camera okay, uh, and then um, we can uh, basically uh, you know uh, take a, a photo of the training today all right so maybe you can turn on your camera and then you can see how you appear in, in the uh, together mode now uh, function uh, so you can see that some of our lectures are ready here online so are you all seeing the same together mode now where you see some white seats and all this? Are you all seeing that? Is this something where you all are seeing that? Uh, is it muted? You all are muted, is it? Um, just now we're still seeing your screen. Now? Are you all uh, into? Uh, um, I can see the together mode now. Yes, so it will activate when you have you turn on your camera if you don't turn on your camera then you will be still seeing my um, screen the powerpoint is now earlier uh, when you turn on your camera then you are able to see okay so um i think is, is everyone still ready in to... my together mode come, come again uh, Dr. Amira, i think i lost you come again um, I'm not in the together mode. I don't see it. I'm still in my regular view. How about now? Um, still no. <laughs> oh, I think maybe your Microsoft Teams is not uh, updated. Um, oh. I think you have to update your Microsoft. I'll show you later how to update because the new updates now it synchronizes. So if the uh, meeting um, organizer turn. Oh, no, 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 wait. The meeting organizer, that means Umu, 
uh, you have to activate the together mode now. Can you activate the together mode and in the auditorium? Uh, yeah, I activate my together mode. So now I I'm in the together mode. But when I when I when I go back to like gallery mode, yeah. um, I'm in gallery mode. So I'm not following your I'm not following the presenters mode. Okay. So I have to update my MS yeah, Teams yeah. first, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So the meeting organizer turns on the together mode. So that means the presenter, lah. The meeting uh, organizer turns on together mode, and everyone's screen will switch to uh, together mode now. Okay, so that, that's how it works, lah. Okay, so you can turn on together mode. All right, and then uh, maybe we can take a picture. I think now at the moment there's only four of us here. Is everyone else here? You want to join us for the photography? Okay, so we see there's a five. Uh, another person has joined. Anyone else joining? Anyone else joining the the together boot? Okay, I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, we have about seven. Uh, if you want to join, you just turn on. Ah, uh, uh, no camera on PC. You don't forget to turn on your camera. You, some of us <laughs> might be wondering how to join. Uh, we, we can't join. You have to turn on your camera, then uh, you can join the together mode. Uh, this is a very nice mode. When I teach my students, um, I always use this uh, mode because, you know, sometimes when you use the grid, uh, the, the, the normal uh, meeting where you see all the boxes, uh, uh, then you tell your students, can you turn on your camera or you know, turn on your camera? I want to see you. Sometimes they feel very uncomfortable, you know. So when, when I teach using together mode, uh, I can see that, you know, it's like a virtual classroom where you're sitting, everyone uh, are sitting in a virtual classroom. So this is where, um, you know, I can say, okay, I see you. there's only five, uh, you know, uh, there are about 16 hours. Can you come and join us in the class? And then sometimes when they turn off their camera, uh, they, I can see that the numbers are reducing. So I tell them, okay, what is happening? I see that my students are missing again. And then they turn on their camera, you know. So that is a more like a more a polite uh, manner lah, rather than telling, ah, uh, Umu, I, I, you know, turn on your camera. I want to see you. Turn on your camera. <laughs> so there's some, uh, you know, you know, I let you know, uh, they actually there are many complaints that went to our uh, management lah, because they say the lecturers all are very harsh. They want to turn on the camera, ask the students to turn on the camera. So this is another way of uh, gently asking your students uh, to turn on the camera because they have to appear in this meeting. Uh, then you can see them. Okay. Uh, okay. I think uh, Ubu, can you? I I think we only have about uh, maybe the other the other setting the other. <laughs> so you can see there are different different settings. Ah. Uh, so it's, it's very nice, but this depends on the numbers. Uh. It depends on how many people are in the meeting. Uh, so if you put a together mode now, and then you have an option to change scene. So if you see on your bottom left, you have like something like a pencil change scene, and you have that option to uh, experiment with it. Uh. You have different, different scene, for example. Okay. All right. Yeah, so this is the back to the together mode now. Okay, let's let's take a photo. Maybe Umu, you want to help us to take a photo of the um, training today. All right, one, two, three. One, two. Okay. Oh. All right. So okay, so we took a photo of the, of the of the training today. Okay, and um, okay. So let me let me just. Okay, now this is another cute, cool feature yeah, about Together Mode now. Okay, now not many people are aware, yeah, not many people are aware about this uh, cool new feature of um, Together Mode now. Okay, now uh, if you are the meeting organizer, if you are the meeting organizer, that means you are the one who set up the meeting and you are the one who sends the link to the meeting uh, and everyone clicks the link to join your meeting. If you're the meeting organizer, now you even have the ability to activate together mode now and you are even have the ability to assign seats. Uh, so for example, if I am having a conference or if I'm having an official event and you want certain people to be placed alongside 
uh, uh, another person. So, for example, you have a VIP. Uh, maybe you yourself, uh, maybe you yourself say, I want to be beside the VIP in a virtual meeting. Now you can assign seats. Last time you cannot assign seats, you know. Uh, so now you are able to assign the seats. Uh, so you own the together mode now and you can swap people. So how you do that is the same. Uh, you see a pencil icon where you have the change scene there. Uh, once you click that, uh, you are able to uh, change the scene. Okay, um, let me just show some of our uh, participants here uh, who are not sure. So I, I, I am not able to show you that functionality here because I am not the meeting organizer for this training. But uh, if you are a meeting organizer, you are able to do that. You are able to change seat and you can even assign seats. Huh? So this is something that is really, really cool uh, um, for future programs or future conferences, for example. So um, for example, now, if you see this one, change scene. So you see it's a very small thing at, a, at the bottom left of your screen. Uh, change scene. This is the together mode now. So when you click change scene, not only you are able to select uh, what scene you want, different, different scenes, you can also assign seats uh, within that uh, scene. But that one will take some time. Lah. Let's say if you want to place people uh, side by side or what, uh, that will take time. But let's say that you only want about two or three people to be uh, at the side of each other, uh, you can. Ah, so you see, like for example, Umu is now uh, experimenting with the uh, together mode now. So uh, Umu, can you put one of the scene? Can you put the auditorium scene? Can you put the auditorium scene? Uh, when, okay, now can you put me beside you, assign seat? Um, I'm not sure uh, where it is the assigned seat. Change, change scene and change then you will seat. see, uh, do you see assigned seat? Do you um, have this? No. Don't have the assigned seat function? No. Right? I just saw the auditorium. Okay. Maybe maybe you have to update your, your teams as well. Huh? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me show you all how to update. Huh? Okay. Um, so you go to Teams. Go to Teams. Right. This is your Microsoft Teams. So to update Teams is you go to here. Hey, sorry, this one. The, the appliances here. Okay. And then you click Chat for Updates. Okay. Chat for Updates. Okay. And then you update. Uh, you are able to now assign seats. So those of you who don't see this function, uh, you need to update. Lah. Uh, sometimes Teams doesn't auto update. Uh, you need to update. So check for updates, update it, and then you try back the together mode. Uh, now, see, you are able to now assign seat. You can place, okay, like now, for example, you see this uh, together mode. Now I'm sitting beside Dr. Amira and Umu is behind. But now uh, Umu can even reshuffle. You, only the organizer. Uh, so uh, if you are just the attendee, you're not able to do that. Only the organizer can do that. Uh, so they can reassign and all this. So this is very useful for any official event or you want your student, certain student to be beside you in the class and all this, that all can be done now. Okay, so that is the another new feature for uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay, any questions so far you all have? You all have any questions so far? No, I can follow up. Okay, let's do something a little bit more fun now. Now, um, I'm going to show you how to conduct polls, how to conduct survey, like polls. Are some, you know, last time I give training, uh, they say, what, what is polls? And they, they, the, the lecturer don't really understand what is polls. Another uh, word for polls is uh, survey, like, a simple survey. Yeah, let's say you want to do a simple survey online. Now you can also do that. Uh, so you can do the survey within the meeting. Okay, so how to do that is very simple. Right, but just bear in mind, you need to have few steps first. Uh, in enable to, to uh, you need to do. Um, <laughs> my English has been all over the place lately. You need to perform few steps first. Uh, before you can do a survey or you can do a poll. Uh, within the meeting. So what you can do is okay. For example, now you see my calendar. You see my teams. I have a calendar, right? So bear in mind that you need to schedule your meeting. To conduct a poll, you need to schedule your meeting. So go to new meeting as usual, put the title, put all the email address, the date and all this, and then you've got your meeting scheduled, something like this. 
where we are doing it this morning, top new features in Microsoft Teams. So this is a scheduled meeting. Now, I want to have a poll. I want to have a survey within this meeting. So there is a way of doing it, and this is a very cool feature. So if you click this one, you double click that, 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 um, this uh, thing that you have here. Oh, 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 sorry. I can't do this because I am not the meeting organizer. Okay, let me go to, okay, you only if you are a meeting organizer, you can do this. Huh? You are not a meeting organizer, you cannot. That means you are the one who scheduled the meeting. So in this case, I'm not the meeting organizer. So I'm going to go to uh, maybe another event. Let me see. Um, Dr. Donny, can I confirm something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's say uh, I was the one who created the team. Okay. Okay. So Zairi is the one who created the meeting in the team. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now who is the event organizer? Can the, I do something or Zairi? Zairi. Zairi. Yeah, right, okay. Uzairi is the one, the meeting All organizer. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So never mind. Let me go to so to use the poll within the meeting, you have to be the one who created the meeting. The created the meeting as in you are the meeting organizer. So now let me go to okay. For example, this is the meeting that I have. I have a meeting with somebody here, which I've created a few days ago. Now I'm going to double click this. All right. And then what you are going to see uh inside here is you are going to have uh, here, you click uh, two more. You see here two more. Then you got breakout rooms and then you got polls. So you got uh, two. So I'm going to click polls. Polls. Okay. Now in polls, you have uh, various uh, features. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to delete this. Okay, so now for example, in polls, when you go to polls, you will get a window that looks something like this. If you are doing polls for the first time, you will see that there are many options on your right where it gives you different, different options. Okay, uh, but if you have used polls before, you won't use this. That, that, that option is just to give an overview for those who are new to uh, using polls in a meeting. So if you go to click polls, um, you are able to see some pop-up boxes on your right that gives you an idea what are the different different options that is available. So now you click new poll, okay, and it's going to link you to Microsoft Forms. You don't have to go to Microsoft Forms. Everything can be done here. So you have few options. You've got multiple choice, you've got quiz, you've got rating, you've got word cloud, you've got even ranking. So now, for example, I'm going to click multiple choice. So I am going to put, for example, a question. Which of the feature in Microsoft Teams you like best? Okay, for example, which of the feature in Microsoft Teams you like best? So maybe I'm going to put a uh, breakout room. Okay, now next one I'm going to put poll. Okay, and then next one is um, meet now. Okay, and then uh, maybe next one I'm going to put calendar. Okay, so now you can even toggle multiple selections. So maybe there's more than one answer your audience would like. So I'm going to click multiple selection and then I am going to put launch now. If you want to uh, launch the poll during the meeting now, like what I'm doing now, I'm having a meeting all of you. And if I want to do the poll now, you can click launch now. Otherwise, you can save it as a draft and launch it later. So maybe I have a meeting later at one o'clock and I want to do a poll with all my participants. So I'm going to save it as a draft. And then during the meeting, I will activate the poll. Uh, this is how you can do it. Or if you have a meeting now and you want to launch it now, you can also do that. So now, for example, since we're in the meeting, I'm going to click launch now. OK, and what is going to happen is you all are going to see a poll, right? So where are you all going to see the poll? Okay, you are going to see the poll now here. Oh, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> you won't see the poll in this meeting is because I created the poll in another meeting. So you're not able to see that. Uh, so this is the organizer able. So maybe Umu, can you try and see? Can you uh, create a poll and see whether you're able to do one very quickly? Okay, can you hold on for a while? Let me try. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Just do something simple like this. Lah. 
which are the best, which are the future or any other questions you have. Just something simple so that all our uh, participants are able to experiment. So remember, poll, only the meeting organizer can create and launch. So in this case, I'm not the organizer. So I, uh, that's why you can see that there are quite a lot of limitation if you're not the um, organizer. Dr. Donny, uh, yeah, yeah. can't you uh, request control and do the editing by yourself if you want to? Uh, not possible um, at the moment, uh, even though the feature is there, but uh, it's, it's very unstable. And uh, at some cases, most of the time, you're not able to take control. Not, oh. not, not, not like Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think we'll just uh, give a few minutes for Umu to start that poll. Any of you have used poll before um, in your meeting as part of the meeting? Have you all used poll before as part of the meeting? That means you have a survey done within the meeting itself. Any of you have, have done that before? No, huh? Okay, so this is a, a, a good new feature for you uh, to start. You, if you have a class and all this, uh, this will be, or you have a meeting, this will be a, a good new feature. Okay, so Sheena says that yes, you have tried it uh, before, yeah? And uh, Umu? Uh, Umu is at uh, Zairi's uh, computer because Zairi, I think, is the meeting organizer. So they're trying to create oh. it right now. <laughs> a couple of minutes. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, I have a question, Dr. Dani. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. When we were in the uh, together mode just now, um in you know the, the together mode i tried to make some reactions so usually uh in the normal mode like you know you can if you make a reaction you can see it on that person's picture or, or profile uh but yeah. i couldn't see my reactions i don't know whether you saw it or not is it possible to do reactions in together mode uh reactions as in how uh dr amira you mean Oh yes, yes, yes. I, I I get what you mean. You you mean you when you are in together mode, you put reaction and uh, some icons comes up, right? The thumbs up. Yes, yes, can. Yeah, we I I'm able to see this now. Yeah. You were. Oh, you so you saw some, yeah, you saw yeah. my reactions just now. Yeah, then yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't see it in my in mine though. So uh, maybe maybe I had to update my teams. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, poll is what uh, Dr. Sheena says here. Yeah, poll, you've got many other options now. Uh, so, you even have uh, rating, you even have uh, word cloud, you have many, many, you got many, many options. Uh, for example, you've got the polls here. Okay, and then um, here you have new poll, are there? You see, there is some suggestions here. So, you got a word cloud. You can do a word cloud and then you have ranking. You can do a ranking and then you have rating and then you have multiple choice. So this is how it will appear when your respondents uh, 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 respond, you are able to see. Umu, you're okay, Umu? Almost okay. Just give a give her a moment. She's trying to set up the poll. I think. Okay. Can I clarify something? Um, is the poll only appear if you already update your MS team? Sorry, Umu. Uh, is the poll only appear uh, when you update your Microsoft team? Ah uh, yes, when you are ready in a meeting, you can launch it ready. Okay, okay, then. Uh, because uh, I can't, I can't see, see in the screen also. I think there's a Maybe. double echo. Uh, Dr. Mira, you can mute a bit. Can you mute? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Umu, come again. Okay, um, because Zairi is the one created the meeting. 
-hmm. Okay, but we can't see the pool on his side also. Go, okay, Maybe go. you can get us back? Can, can, can. All right, so okay. what you do is you go back to your event, go back to your calendar. Okay, for example, this is the, our workshop today, right? You, you have to click on the workshop today. Click on the workshop okay. today right. and then go to polls. Here, go to polls. Uh, do you have that ready? Polls. Uh, double click. Double click dulu Zairi. Uh, he just has a breakout room. Tak ada polls. No. There's no polls. <laughs> Okay. I'm not sure why. Okay, okay, never mind, never mind. Uh, <laughs> Zairi, I think you have to update your teams also juga. I think. <laughs> 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 okay, never mind, never mind. Don't worry, don't worry. I, you all do it after this lah. Okay, uh, right. I think for the rest of our participants, I think you get the drift lah. You get the idea on how to do this. So it's very, very straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. So don't, don't, don't uh, worry about this. Yeah. So you can just launch it and then uh, your meeting audiences your meeting participants are able to respond so the, it will appear in the chat uh, you will appear in the chat and uh, how to launch it when you launch it it will appear in the chat so when you click your chat function it will appear there and then your respondents are able to respond to that okay so that is how we conduct uh, polls yeah uh, for that anyone not clear yet about polls can you please let me know anyone not clear how to launch the polls and all this Okay, clear. Okay, now the next one that I am going to go to. Um, okay, let me let me just try this. Uh, who's uh, who's ID? Maybe along the workshop. Can you try to make me an owner? You go to the uh, participants list here, and then you make me an owner, and then I will try to see. Uh, you see, you are the organizer. You see, for example, who's ID is the organizer. Can you try to make me the owner? Then I maybe I can do some of the features here. Okay, all right. Um, now the next one that you all should uh, take note. This is very very nice. Ah, uh, this one you really really will love as an um, educator, you know. And um, <laughs> some of the students will will not like me uh, once I show you all this. Uh, but never mind lah. Uh, what to do lah? Uh, you cannot make and uh, cannot make everyone happy. Okay. Um, uh, what I'm going to show you is something called insight. Insight. Okay, now in Microsoft Teams, you have a very cool feature called Insight. So you, you can click this uh, uh, three dots here, the appendices, and then you click Insight. Insight. If you don't have this, uh, you can find an app. So you just type Insight, it will appear here. If you don't have it, it will look something like a light bulb. It looks something like a light bulb here. Insight. So click this Insight. OK, now what is going to happen is in Insight, it's going to give you an overview about your session. So this Insight is very, very uh, uh, interesting and good if you have created teams. This is not meeting, yeah? if you have created teams. So you create a team and you add the members inside. And, you know, for example, uh, you go to teams, all right? Then you have uh, a lot of students. OK, for example, like this. You created a teams okay and then um, inside these teams you have students inside there and then you have shared files and all this um, material that means it's a class group lah, a class group you have created with your students now if you go to insights here you are able to identify how active is the class so this insights gives you an overview how active so you can see for example i have a class name here um, this is my class name, uh, Microsoft Teams Digital Hub for Educators here. You can see that I have 34 students now that is already enrolled in my class, right? So here it will say to you for the whole of last week, how many students are active in your class as in they dial in for the meeting, um, as in when you upload documents and files, they are actually reading it as well. Uh, so this is something that you can track. So it will appear here how many students were inactive and how many students were active. Now, if you want to track in terms of um, student activity as well, so you can see, for example, digital activity assignments, you've got all this. All this will be activated. In You have an assignment, then you'll be activated. Now, if you have not assigned an, any assignment, then it's going to be 
uh, blur like this. So what you can do, for example, digital activity, you can see digital activity, online engagement patterns, online engagement patterns. So you click this one. Okay, now what is going to happen? This is really very cool feature, you know. You see all your students, this is all your students here, right? Now you can even see what are they doing online in your group, in your group. So for example, okay, this person, uh, Go Yi Fang. Uh, now you see there's something like a purplish thing. So now you can even go to this purplish thing and see what the student did. Click this. Okay, then you can see what the student is doing. Go Yi Fang. So you click and you see the student has opened a file tab. Okay, so the student has clicked the file tab and then the student has specifically um, clicked the recording part. The recording. So the student has access the recording of the class. So this is how you can see whether your students are reading. So for example, you upload some notes, you upload some PowerPoint in the class. Now you want to see whether the student actually opened the PowerPoint. So you ask them, have you done the reading yesterday? I give you all the assignment or oh, everyone say, yes, 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 we did. So this is how you can track your students, whether they actually open it or not. So for example, this is another person, uh, Kian Teng. Okay, now I put my mouse over here and you can see that he has opened the recording so he is only accessing the recording whereas this student has done both he has done uh, the file step has viewed the file step what is the files inside and on top of that he has also clicked the recording so this is how you can track your students engagement and see are they active and are they following your instruction uh, so this is what you call microsoft insights so here you can even switch uh, within the classes. So you've got more teams, you have more uh, options here, uh, which you have created for your student. Now you can even sort this according to date. Okay, now for example, September 20, and I want to see maybe one week class or two weeks class. Uh, uh, so September 20 to maybe uh, 1st of October. So here you can even change. Uh, you can customize the date, September 20 to 1st of October. Now you can see all your students um, activities. Now, if you want to be very specific, you want to see very specific activities, you can even click all activities. Now, you can even see very specific. For example, I want to see how active they are in meetings. Uh, so, you click this in meetings and then you can see. Because this one semester break, lah, so I never had anything. This is my last semester. Never had anything, so that's why everything is very empty. Lah. Uh, but usually when you have a class, uh, you will have all the, the purple color uh, uh, markings over this so you can know what are they doing. So now if I want to see files, files, I want to see files, how many students are reading the files, are reading the document, the PowerPoint, the notes that I've uploaded, you can click files. Now, even best thing about this is you can even export this data into an Excel. So if you click export data to Excel, you can even export it into Excel. So this is how uh, very, very uh, precise this Microsoft Insights is uh, to help our fellow educators in terms of analyzing your student engagement activities. Okay, you all have any, any questions on this, on the Microsoft Insights? Everyone okay? Okay, yeah, can follow on. Huh? Okay, uh, now the next one, we are going to go to um, how to pin a message in chat and um, how to reply for a specific message. Okay, now for example, this meeting, uh, okay, we have uh, one of our lecturers, uh, Dr. Wong. Dr. Wong say, good morning, I just joined. Uh, may I have the recording after this workshop? Okay, now for example, if I were to put a message for all the participants, so dear participants, uh, uh, for example, please, uh, click this uh, link to record your attendance and feedback. Okay. So, for example, I type a message in my chat. So, you see that it's coming out in the chat now. Dear participants, please click this link uh, to record your attendance and feedback. So, usually, uh, when, when we communicate, when we use the chat actively, right? Uh, all of these are going to go up. 
Uh, all of these are going to go up. That means your chat that you just put here is going to go up and other people's message is going to go down. So sometimes in participant, you ask them, okay, don't forget to click the link and then everyone asks you, where, where is the link? Where is the link? Then you have to go and copy and paste it back again. Okay, this is the old style. Now, what you can do is you can take your mouse and hover over that message. You will see uh, the apocalypse here. Uh, you have the three dots, huh? more options. So you click more options and then now you have the uh, pin. Now you have the pin option. So now you can pin your message here so that every participants are able to, um, uh, when they join the meeting or later on, they are able to see your message. Okay, so I'm going to put this in a PowerPoint um, so others could, could view it. Okay, so for example, uh, let me share the screen, yeah? So this is a, another good new feature where your message is constantly pinned. So in case anyone were to ask you, uh, where is the attendance link? Where is the, the, the message? I, I cannot see it. So you can tell them, okay, you refer to the pin message. So it will be forever there. It will be pinned there. So any messages that comes after that will not override it. Uh, it's going to be pinned there uh, forever. So you see, for example, uh, those of you are not able to see it. So this is the uh, themes, right? So you see, I just have to hover my mouse over a message. Not only you have reaction, you can click the three dots here and then you click pin, pin. So you are able to pin that message permanently there. So anyone who comes in, uh, you can even give an instruction. Okay, uh, for those new to the meeting, uh, please see the pin chat uh, for instruction and what's so not. Right. So that ah, so now we see for example, Umu has given salam and good day. Okay, you got the attendance feedback form and all this. Uh, kindly fill up. So Umu can now pin pin that chat so that it becomes a permanent feature in this um, training. Okay, so this is a way on how to uh, pin the chat. Okay, anyone has any questions on this? No questions, yeah? Okay, the next one is teams also have the ability for us to reply to a specific message. Okay, now you see in this chat, you have a lot of messages. Okay, now what you can do, you can reply to a specific message. So uh, last time, uh, it's like WhatsApp, right? like WhatsApp where you can reply to the specific message, you see. Uh, so now you even have this feature in Teams, right? So now, for example, I have Umu's uh, message here. So I am going to reply uh, specifically to Umu. So now, okay, I'm going to show you how, how this looks like in a PowerPoint. Yeah, I think I saw a question. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Is there, is there a question? Yes, go ahead. I think somebody raised hand, right? Any any question? Okay, so this is how it looks like. Let me let me share the screen. Okay. So now in Teams, you are able to reply to a specific message now. So for example, this is Umu's message. So you just have to hover your mouse over, you get the reaction, you click the three dots here, and then you click reply, reply. So when you click reply, you are able to reply to that specific message in the meeting. Ah, so for example, you see what Dr. Sheena has replied. Noted thanks. So can we all try to do that? That means reply to that specific message by Umu. So I'm going to reply as well. Okay. Noted. Thank you. So you see that I am replying specifically to that particular message. So last time, we cannot do that. Last time, we can only put a message uh, and uh, maybe we can only tag certain people, but um, you cannot respond to that particular message. But now you have the ability to respond to that 
particular message, uh, something like this. So that makes it even more personalized. That makes it even more cool. Okay. All right. Any questions on this? Okay. No questions. Huh? All right. Okay. Now I'm coming to the second last part of our workshop today. Now you also have a feature called annotation. Annotation in a meeting. Okay, so now annotation in a meeting, first you need to have uh, a picture, for example, or any other materials. Lah. Like now, for example, I have a picture of a world map, right? So you want to do an um, uh, uh, activity with your students or a, an activity with any of your meeting participants. Now you don't have to launch the whiteboard. Okay, last time you need to launch the whiteboard, you need to upload your materials in the whiteboard, and then you are able to annotate. Now there is a shortcut. You don't have to launch the whiteboard. You are able to do this straight away. You are able to annotate without launching the whiteboard. So earlier, remember in the slide that I showed you, there is a option to, uh, to annotate in your, in your slide. So there is in your toolbar, at the top, you had an option to annotate, right? So now if you go back, let me go back to the slide. So for example, uh, this option, you have an option to annotate. So this one, if you see the slide, you have an option to annotate. So now if you click this pen, right, you are able to annotate that picture, okay? So now, for example, like um, I have this, um, meeting picture here. Now I can annotate it. So I can annotate. And now as a meeting organizer, you can invite everyone to annotate in that as well. So now you are able to see that you have a dashboard. Something has appeared. you got a pen. you got this one and all this. So maybe and now are you able to see that? Can you all see that the picture you have an annotation screen now? Can you see the world map and do you see the annotation screen? Yes. Uh, now you can annotate. So maybe now can we try together, see the countries that you have and maybe try to to write what? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So maybe you can write what country name, for example, or, or you know, you can just chonting, chonting or anything. Lah. You can even put a sticky note. You can even put a sticky note like you see, um, you have somebody who has already wrote a sticky note. I, and uh, you can even annotate like this. Now, if you see that as a meeting organizer, uh, you are not able to see who is writing what. Okay, but, uh, hey, sorry, what am I talking? Okay, as a meeting organizer, you are able to see who is annotating. That means the name will come out. For example, who put the tick, who put the, the word South Korea, who is drawing what, the name of the person will come out if you are the meeting organizer. If you are not the meeting organizer, you are just the meeting participant, you are able to see what I am seeing now. I uh, There's no names. So somebody is putting an emoticon, somebody is putting a sticker. You can only see the picture of the person. Huh? If the person put a sticker, you can put uh, the, 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 the picture of the person will come out temporary and then what the person is typing. But now anyone is scribbling, okay, uh, South Korea, uh, somebody is putting some, some circle all over, you're not able to see the name. But if you are the meeting organizer, you are able to see who has done that, that circle, who has done the tick, who has put South Korea question mark, and then um, who has put the function. Uh, this is another cool feature of uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, this is the latest update. OK, and this is a really, really cool if you want to do a collaboration activity. So, for example, now I want to do um, if you are teaching a subject on this and then you want to ask your student, OK, label as many countries as you know in this world map. Right? You do an activity with your students. So now all of them can uh, annotate together. Uh, all of them can do this activity and annotate together, together with you. Uh, then you can do this activity. So there are many, many ways la, how you can annotate, but this is just an example in which I am giving you. Okay, so this is annotation within a meeting. So remember, you don't have to launch the whiteboard, right? Uh, you can um, do it immediately like this. Uh, you don't have to launch a whiteboard. It makes it much, much more easier. 
and much, much more collaborative where everyone can participate and do the activities together. OK, so this is annotation uh, in a meeting. All right. Any questions on this? You got highlighter, you mean. got. Yeah, yeah. Um, this annotation, right? Um, is there yes. a limitation uh, of number of people that it can accommodate? Uh, as not 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 that I know of actually any okay. people that is in a meeting can annotate. Right. Okay. As long as they are in the meeting, they has to be in the meeting and they can annotate. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then you have different different. You got uh, highlighter, you got eraser, you got pen, you got sticker. So many many functions lah. You can use and then uh is is something is very interesting. The students will and any meeting is easy to scribble lah. Huh? It's something like Zoom whiteboard. Uh, where you can invite others to annotate, but this one. Uh, you don't need to uh, invite, you can straight away launch it and, you know, you can start doing your activity, which is very, very fast, actually, uh, effortless. Uh, so, uh, sorry, Dr. Doni. Uh, so for this one, after uh, annotation are done, so it will be saved automatically. So if I... Like, ah. I like, ah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Talking about annotation, uh, uh, one of the setbacks for this is you're not able to capture what was annotated so i will suggest to do a screenshot uh that is one of the setbacks you're not able to capture yet uh, teams does not have the feature to capture what was annotated so um to, in order to do this i will suggest you do a screenshot to capture what was annotated not a thank you okay okay any any other questions on on, on this annotation um yeah, I have one, Dr. Dani. Um, yeah, please can please. you ask the uh, I don't know the owner of the of the whiteboard or the meeting organizer? Can you um, can you uh, what do you call it? Uh, not allow some people to annotate and then allow some to annotate? Like if it, yeah. Um, I I need to get back to you on that, Dr. Amira. I, um, as far as I know, um. I don't think that function is available, but please let me cross check and see whether I can allow some to annotate and some not. Well, here you you do if you click the settings option there, you you do have as an organizer you do have a function called everyone can annotate. Uh, but you also have an option only I can annotate. Uh, but whether you can seclude certain people in the meeting and include certain people, uh, I will need to check on that. Okay, I will email you separately, Dr. Amira, on that. Okay, um, any other questions you all have on this? Okay, none, yeah? All right, okay, so this is on the annotation. Um, so we are coming to the last part of our workshop now. Now, one of the things that uh, maybe you can take note of is the uh, recording, the recording and um, live transcription. Now, those of us who are qualitative researchers, you are going to love this, okay? Because uh, you are able to do a meeting recording and there is a live transcription um, from this uh, um, from this function. So. To do a recording, you just have to go to the more. You have people chat reaction, click more, and then you have recording there. Okay. And then you have start transcription. So you even have a start transcription here. And then you can see that the, um, uh, the, the, uh, what is this? Uh, transcription is now transcribing. So if you go to more, you will see start transcription and you can see that whatever that I'm speaking, the meeting is transcripting, uh, the, the software is transcripting whatever that I'm speaking. So I see some of you have already turned on the uh, started transcription. So you can see, for example, Sharon has turned on, uh, Salifa has turned on, and you are able to see that whatever that I'm speaking, it's all being transcribed into that. So this is another very cool feature. And on top of that, once the meeting is over, you can even download whatever that is being transcribed. So, for example, I give you a file on how it looks like. Okay, so this is, okay, let me share my screen, yeah. 
Okay, now this is very particularly useful, um, especially for those who are doing qualitative research. So let me share my screen. Okay, now you will see that uh, this is an example of a copy of the transcription once the meeting is over. Uh, so you are able to download the transcription that you see now um, into a word file. Okay, and you are able to see at what minute, so it's very precise. You are able to see at what minute, what seconds uh, am I talking what. So you see at uh, 0 to uh, 0 0.09, I am saying, this one is what I did uh, uh, for the workshop. Lah. So you see testing 1, 2, testing 1, 2, and then testing live transcription. Uh, one, two. <laughs> uh, so this is what you can. So this is me talking. But in a meeting, you have other people talking as well. It will also transcribe other people talking. So you can see the name of the person, what minute or seconds, and what are they speaking. So if you are doing, for example, a focus group discussion, or you uh, where you got about four or five people, and you want to transcribe that focus group, uh, this is something that you can do as well. So you can transcribe, and the name of the person will appear what second, what minute, and what are they saying. So easily you can start uh, coding and analyzing your data, right? So this is something that's very, very useful. The a live transcription feature that now supplements or complements the uh, recording feature that is already available in Microsoft Teams, okay? All right, any other questions? You all have any other questions? No, uh, you, all, you all are okay with this uh, live uh, transcription uh, and recording feature. Okay. Um, right. Now, the last thing I want to show all of you, okay, this is also another cool feature. It's it's not in a workshop outline, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you anyway uh, because I think this is quite useful. Uh. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me ask Dr. Amira because Dr. Amira has been um organizing a lot of meetings and all this I, and many of you also but i'm just going to ask dr amira dr amira have you been in a meeting uh where you can hear people eating that means they're having some snacks and Sorry, you can hear yeah. them have you been in any meeting yeah yeah them, I, have like... been, where I can hear people drinking and slurping <laughs> yes and i think it happens to me too sometimes <laughs> So it yeah, happens to you as well. And then yeah, sometimes when we have some snacks and you can hear the the, the snack packet and the snack packet sound. Okay. Now and in, also the in... TV, by the way, because uh, <laughs> I do my meetings at home um in the living yeah. room so people can actually hear my TV. <laughs> okay, okay. Um I think on the TV part there's nothing much can can be done. Uh but is something that you can do because TV, you have a voice output. Um, so uh, you can't do anything that has a voice output, but you can do something that is not a voice output. For example, uh, a packet that is crunching, uh, you're eating a snacks and you got a packet sound, for example, or you got a, a drink sound, somebody slurping, for example, or even somebody snoring. La, so <laughs> you even have that, that, that kind of uh, voice output. So what I'm telling that verbal voice, Okay, now you can suppress that. You can suppress that the people can only hear your voice. So I can be eating at the same time and I can be making a lot of noise with a packet. Um, you know, I could be moving it around. I could be taking snacks from the packet, but my meeting participants are not able to hear that. They're only able to hear my voice. This is what we call noise suppression. So how to activate noise suppression in a meeting? Okay, you have your Microsoft Teams here. So you have to go to settings, click the uh, three dots here, and then you go to settings. Your settings is, must be here where you have the three dots here. But if your setting is still under your profile, you go to uh, your name here and you have settings here. It means your Teams is very, very outdated. You really need to uh, update it. Yeah? So the settings has now moved separately. You have the three dots here, the button. And then you click settings. Okay. And then when you click settings, you go to devices. Devices here. Okay. Now you have noise suppression. Noise suppression. Right. So now you will see that this is auto, auto. So you have to change it uh, between high, low, and off. Off means this. 
totally no noise suppression. Now there is some form of noise suppression, but very minimal, very, very minimal. Off means you, your participants can basically hear everything, even uh, a, a very minimal sound from any source, they can hear it. So I won't recommend you to off it. I won't recommend you to turn on high as well, because high uh, takes a lot of system capacity in your laptop. You already tax your laptop, and if your laptop is the type that is very uh, dated and it's not a uh, new laptop, and uh, you have a very old um, core uh, system or your system in your laptop is very old, uh, please don't turn on high because you're going to tax your laptop and you will crash. Okay. Uh, so I will say you just turn on low enough, just turn on low and then you see the magic. So you can do all the noise crumpling or whatever and this, uh, it will not be captured in your meeting. So only your voice uh, will be captured. Even if you drop a pen or you drop anything, nothing will capture in the meeting because it's only focusing on your voice. Okay, that is the uh, noise suppression. All right. Any any other questions you all have on uh, Microsoft Teams? I think I've come to the end of the uh, workshop already. Do you all have any other questions? Um, I just have a quick one about the noise suppression. My yeah, yeah. settings only has a on or off kind of like button for noise suppression because I haven't okay. updated yeah, my yeah. Teams or am yeah, I yeah, in yeah. the wrong place? Uh, you haven't updated. You have to update your themes. Uh, then you will have that function. So maybe after this, uh, Dr. Amira, you update your themes. Then you will have Okay, that. thanks. Okay. All right. Um, do you all have any other questions? Hi, Donnie. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, have, yes. A, I have a question. Um, I was just wondering, general wonderment. Uh, can we okay. still not schedule meeting for private Teams channels? Yes, you use the meet now through the calendar. Go to calendar uh -huh. and use the meet now function. Then you are able to schedule the meeting already. No problem. For for private channels. Yes, yes. Okay, no problem. Oh, okay. I haven't tried that. All right. Aye, um, you can try so that. Yeah. For if you want to schedule a, a meeting for private channels, um, if we use um, but this that is meet now, right? What if I want to do a pre scheduling and how do I add the private meeting? A private okay. channels. Go to Clender. Let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. Go to Clender, and then sh new meeting. Go to Clender. Okay. New meeting, and then you can schedule this meeting here. But this is not within the. Uh, this is not within the team slot. This is just a meeting, a normal meeting. If you want to yeah. have a meeting uh -huh. within the channel, then yeah. you have to go to Teams. Okay, and then you have to create and join a team and all this. Then you create a yeah. channel. So are you talking yep. about a meeting within a channel? Is it? Is that yes, what you're talking about? The private, yes, the private channel um, okay. within the channel. Okay, for example, I have uh, this meeting now, top, top new features in uh, Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to click yep. um, add channel, add yep. channel. Okay, now you're going to get this box. So maybe I'm going to put... Uh, uh, secret, uh, something like that, uh, secret, uh, mm -hmm. for example. Now, this one, privacy, change this to private. So, specific teammates have access. That means, mm -hmm. let's say in the top new features, you have 30 over people, but only specific people have access. So, I'm going to change this to private, and then I'm going to get create, okay? And then once the channel is created, then you add who is the people that only have access. So for example, I'm going to put Jasmine. Uh, so j only Jasmine, and then uh, maybe um, I'm going to put uh, maybe somebody else, uh, maybe Umu, for example. Okay, Umu. So I'm going to click add. So only these two people have access to this channel. So I'm going to click done. So now you have the channel and you see there's a small padlock here. So now if you click this channel, and you want to have meeting with only these two people. That means uh, yourself and Umu. Uh, Jasmine and Umu has been added. You want to have a meeting only with these two people. You click meet. And only these two people in this channel are in this meeting and can access this meeting. Yeah, but you can't schedule it, right? No, no, no. You can't schedule it. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, you don't have that function to schedule it. Now. But actually, if you already have this, 
uh, you can just tell the person, okay, this is the date and time, go to the channel and then just click meet now because it's already here. Yeah, no, because yes. we want to schedule, because we want to capture it in our calendar. So okay. it's, it's such an issue if we can't schedule okay. it and we have to do separately. Yes, yes. If you want to schedule and you want it to appear in the calendar and all this, then you use the calendar function. Use the calendar and then the new meeting function. Mm -hmm. And then you just add the people that you want to be involved yeah. in there. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank okay. you, Dani. All right. No problem. Okay, so I think uh, Dr. Sheena has also tried that noise suppression. Uh, <laughs> and you can see that it really works. Uh. Um, so those of us who like to eat snacks during meeting and uh, slurp drinks and all this, uh, so you can <laughs> you can try this so people don't know that you're actually doing a lot of things behind. Uh, all right. Okay, so I think I've come to the uh, uh, end of the meeting here. All right. Um, so you all, do you all have any other... Uh, questions you all have any other because i'm uh, coming doctor, to the end i already. have uh, one question about the recycling the meeting link so if i scheduled a meeting before and i want to recycle the link again so uh, i need to manually change the date and time from calendar uh, is it something like that and then the um up updated information will go to the participants calendar okay if that's the case you go to new meeting right uh, what you can do is okay for example you can put meeting right and then oh, oh sorry uh, meeting okay then you put you put all the participants name inside here uh, and then here you can put the recurrence you see and that means this day uh, for example, it, uh, 12 October is a Wednesday. So let's say if you want to have a meeting every Wednesday. So Wednesday, and then you have the date, and then uh, to this date, and then you have uh, this time, for example. So you want it to have every week. Uh, you want it to appear in every week, the calendar as well. Uh, so you just put here, repeat weekly, and then this will appear. So you just select the date and all this, and it will appear in your calendar on a weekly basis. Uh, that one I know, but I okay. was asking, uh, it is maybe uh, two or three times event and not a regular regular event. So I just want to uh, recycle my previous link. I don't want to uh, repeat it on a regular interval. Uh, what do you mean by recycle? That means people use the same link for the same link the next time? Uh, to, can, yeah. Can. Can. No problem. Just, just uh, provide them the link and you just tell them you can click the same link and start the meeting. You don't have to do anything else. Oh, so ah, not need to change. Okay, okay. Yeah, you. even if you don't do all this, also never mind. But the point is, if you want it to appear in your calendar, uh, that means you want the people to see in the calendar. Then you have to do this. Yes, yes. But yeah, but if you don't want it to appear in the calendar and you just say, uh, people already know. Okay, every Wednesday and this is the time to meet. Then you just click the same link. You don't have to disturb any or put any of this here. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. All right, any any other questions you all have as well? Uh, I think Wong, is it? Wong, you have a question, is it Wong? Hey, the hand went down. <laughs> okay, so I think that if there's no other questions, uh, so thank you very much, everyone, for... Um, attending this workshop and uh, I hope the workshop is beneficial uh, for all of you and I wish you all the best in trying out these new features of uh, Microsoft Teams huh? and uh, in case you need a recap uh, you can uh, EdEx has also recorded this and you can get a copy of the recording just um, as a recap for you and to try out the new functions as well okay so thank you everyone and uh, nice meeting you and uh, wish you all the best yeah uh, for your usage of uh, Microsoft Teams, yeah? Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Doni. Okay, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank uh, you, Ubu. Thank you, Adek.